Good morning, and welcome to Sacred Heart as we celebrate the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We also wish to acknowledge and welcome the Catholic Daughters as they celebrate with us this morning. Our opening hymn is Glory and Praise to Our God. Please stand. Glory and praise to our God. Who alone gives light to our days? Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. We, the daughters and sons of him who built the valleys and plains, praise the wonders our God has done in every heart that sees. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. In his wisdom, 
wisdom he strengthens us like gold that's tested in fire. Though the power of sin prevails, our God is there to save. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. Every moment of every day, our God is waiting to save. Always ready to seek the lost, to answer those who pray. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his way. Welcome to Sacred Heart of Jesus Church. I'm Father Carlos Alvarez, pastor. We welcome our visitors from Durango, St. Columba Parish, uh, our state regent for the Catholic Daughters of America. Uh, welcome to our Catholic Daughters of America, their corporate communion, and we will install their officers later this day. Uh, welcome to my brother Knights of Columbus, have their corporate communion today as well. Welcome to each and every one of you, whether this is your first time here you're here as a guest with a member of our church or um, invited by someone else. It's nice to have you with us. Today is the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and we offer Mass for the following intentions. For Ufelia Salazar, Leonard Archuleta, for the end of hate, speech, and violence. We pray for the eternal happiness of the souls of Virginia Cordova, Ramon Ojeda Rodriguez, and Neil Knapp. And for all of your intentions, we also are giving thanks for a wonderful week of totus to us, and I'm already seeing the fruits of their missionary discipleship with children and families at these weekend masses. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we gather today, we gather knowing that Jesus Christ is the divine physician and the heavenly healer. So we come before him with humble and contrite hearts. We acknowledge our sins. We trust in God's infinite mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. For he fashioned all things that they might have being. And the creatures of the world are wholesome, and there is not a destructive drug among them nor any domain of the netherworld on earth, for justice is undying. For God formed man to be imperishable. The image of his own nature he made him. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company, experience it. The word of the Lord.
changed my morning into dancing. O Lord, my God, forever will I give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but as a matter of, of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs, so that their abundance may also supply your needs, that there may be equality. As it is written, Whoever had much did, did not have more, and whoever had little did not have less. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at the feet, at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come lay your hands on her, that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for 12 years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors. 
and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately, her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to Jesus, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid. Just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along with the child's father and mother, and he took along with the child's father and mother and those who were with him, and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of 12, arose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. It was a summer 17 years ago, 2004. I think it was my last summer in the valley. I know it was my last summer in the valley. I think this was when this happened. The priest uh, in Capulin and Lajara were unavailable. I think uh, they had, were leaving and the salts were coming in, but hadn't arrived. So I got a sick call to go to the Conejos County Hospital in Lajara. And there was a patient dying. Now, most people who go to a hospital get cured and leave. But this patient was dying. What was so memorable was that she was eight years old. Her name was Licha, which is short for Mary Lou in Spanish. And she was a precious child. I think she had just made her first Holy Communion that spring. So I administered the last sacraments to her. I think her parents were with her. 
And it, uh, so I anointed her. I gave her the last blessing, <clears throat> which is the forgiveness of all sins at the moment of death. And then she received the Atticum, which is Holy Communion for the last time. Literally, it means food for the journey from earth to heaven. And then I left. But I've never forgotten her and that sick call, if you will. Um, when I finished my 10th year of priesthood, the three years here in the valley, seven years in Pagosa, Catholic uh, canon law highly recommends that priests take a sabbatical of six months after 10 years, after 25 years, and after 40 years. But due to the shortage of priests in our diocese, that doesn't really happen <laughs> in this diocese, which is unfortunate. But anyway, um, I got assigned summer school. And I'm the son of a teacher. For me, summer school is punishment. Summer school is, you know, it's a step lower than you know where, and it's, it's the intense purgatory. So for the first time in my life, I went to summer school. Bishop Isern sent me. It was at Creighton University. It was called the Christian Spirituality Program. It was one of the best experiences of my life because it wasn't simply academics, but we were praying and growing uh, in the Ignatian spirituality together. There were other priests. There were religious women and men. There were deacons. There were laymen and laywomen from all over the world, mostly in the U.S., but from other countries as well. It was a phenomenal experience. It was just what I needed because we had had a building, ex uh, building project in uh, Pagosa Springs, and I felt kind of beat up, even though it had been <laughs> finished two and a half years earlier. I still felt the wounds of a building project, building a new church. So having done that, um, it was a great experience in June of 2011. Um, it was really what I needed. And so this is what we hear in the gospel today. What we hear in the gospel today is that the divine physician and the heavenly healer is at work in an incredible fashion. Let's start with the middle of the gospel, which is the woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years. She knew that if she just touched the cloak of Jesus, she would be cured, and she was. She was in fear and trembling that she had done something wrong, and so she fell at Jesus' feet, pleading for mercy. And what does Jesus say to her? He commended her faith. He said, uh, daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. So he commended her faith. He commended her faith. Now Jairus had faith in the power of Jesus, so he pleaded, he fell on his knees and pleaded before Jesus to come and lay his hands, lay his hands on her daughter, which is what priests do when we anoint the sick. We lay hands on the sick. And Jesus immediately said, let's go. But then this woman <laughs> in the crowd touches his cloak and it causes some delay. Now think about it, if you were Jairus, how would you feel? You know, his daughter is actively dying. This woman has been suffering for 12 years. She's in no immediate danger of death. Triage would say, you, you know, you gotta go and rush to the one who's dying. But Jesus doesn't hurry. Jesus stops and he engages the woman. And so then what happens? He gets the news as he's approaching his home that his daughter has died. And he's probably like, oh, in his mind saying, Jesus, I told you so. I mean, we were in a hurry and you stopped to help this woman, to, to encourage this woman. You know, if I were Jairus, I would think about the mind of Jairus. I would be frustrated with Jesus, a little peeved and set off. My daughter's died. Game over, right? And then Jesus <laughs> says something very curious. She's not dead. She's asleep. She's not dead. She's asleep. Okay. Other people laughed at Jesus. So he whittles the crowd down from the crowd to just three witnesses. He shoes the people out of the house and goes into the room with just the father and the mother and his three apostles, Peter, James, and John. He touches her. 
and says, Taritakum, Aramaic for little girl, arise. And this little girl who was dead is give, raised back to life. So the point here is that Jesus is the divine teacher. Jesus is the heavenly healer. A woman touching just his cloak and he touching this girl was a violation of Jewish law. He was made impure by touching a woman who was bleeding uh, and touching a, a person who was dead. He violated Jewish ritual law. He was impure, but he showed his great humanity and his great compassion and his great mercy for the sick and for the dead. And so he is the divine physician. He is the heavenly healer. And this is what St. Gregory the Great said. He was a late, he was a fifth and sixth, he was a sixth and early seventh century uh, pope and doctor of the church. And he said, Christ, the divine physician, the heavenly healer, brings present healing and restoration. Christ, the divine physician and heavenly healer, brings healing and restoration. And that's exactly what he did in today's gospel. He brought healing to the woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. He brought restoration to life to the 12 year old girl who had died. In St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 2, verse 17, he's described as a physician, a physician, and he truly is the divine physician, the heavenly healer. Now, the key for us is do we recognize that like this woman, like Jairus, that we're in need of this divine physician and this heavenly healer? Do we realize that there's some malady or infirmity of our spirit, our soul, our body that needs the healing touch of Jesus because it's available to us in the sacrament of penance, reconciliation, and confession every Saturday from 3.30 to 4.45 or other times by appointment. It is available to us in the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. It's the anointing of the sick. Don't wait till you're dying when you're sick, when there's a serious illness and you need healing call for the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. But most importantly, it's available to us at every Eucharist, every Sunday, more often if possible. That healing touch of Jesus, the divine physician and heavenly healer, comes to us. And so why is this touch of Jesus so important? We get a hint from our first reading. From our first reading, we hear that the envy of the devil led to death that God didn't create death, and God didn't create destruction, any sort of illness or infirmity of soul, spirit, or body. Why does, what does the devil envy? He envies our flesh. He envies our very humanity. The devil is way smarter than us and way more powerful than we are, much more powerful than we are. But he doesn't have a body. He can't receive Jesus as we receive Jesus in the Eucharist, in the sacraments. So the devil envies Jesus, envies humanity because of the fact that we are corporate beings, that we have a body. He actually envies that and emptied himself and was cast from the glory of heaven with a third of the angels who followed him. And so this is, this is why it's so important to receive Holy Communion and participate in the Eucharist every Sunday. Penance regularly, monthly is recommended. And the sacrament of the sick whenever we have a serious illness to call and receive that sacrament. And it's that healing touch of Jesus that we turn to that allows us to be His healing presence for others. To take the grace of these sacraments and to be the healing presence of Jesus for others to pray for them, to encourage them to come to Jesus and to be healed. Sometimes that healing leads to renewal and refreshment, as I experienced in that sub summer program. And then four out of the next, three out of the next four summers, I was able to go back for one month as well. Amazing. It was like having a sabbatical broken up into six 
months rather than six months continuously. And I think it's what happened to Licha. Her restoration came after death. She was restored to the glory of heaven from which she came. And that's what Jesus, what's what Jesus did. We heard that in our second reading. He'd emptied himself. He became poor to make us rich. He emptied himself of the riches of heaven to become like us in all things but sin. It's by his poverty of heaven that we've been enriched with the promise, the sure and certain promise of heaven. So let us remember that the divine physician, the heavenly healer, is always with us. And he's reaching out to us with this touch of grace and this promise of eternal glory. As St. Gregory the Great said, Jesus, the divine physician, the heavenly healer, brings healing and restoration. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Through the divine physician and heavenly healer and the Holy Spirit, we turn to our Heavenly Father with our prayers. For monks and nuns, monasteries and convents, may they grow in holiness and numbers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve in public office, may they uphold the law faithfully and govern wisely. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For summer travelers, may they travel safely and find the Creator in the beauty of creation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the members of this assembly, may they visit the sick and find healing themselves. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those whose ministries and contributions help to support and grow our parish, that God will continue to bless and prosper them in all they do. Let us pray to the Lord. For the intentions we celebrate at this Mass, Euphelia Zalazar, Leonard Archuleta, for the end of hate speech and violence, and for the people of the parish, and for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts.
May God graciously hear us through the sacred heart of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We continue to pray for the eternal happiness of the souls of Virginia Cordova, Ramon Ojeda Rodriguez, and Neil Knapp. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, your only begotten Son emptied himself of the glory of heaven to become like us in all things but sin. And he is the divine physician and heavenly healer who brings healing and restoring restoration to us through the touch of each sacraments every time we turn to him in faith. Hear the prayers we voiced, those in the silence of our hearts. Grant them to your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of his most holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, 
that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring you the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially Ophelia Salazar, Leonard Archuleta, Virginia Cordova, Ramon Ojeda Rodriguez, Neil Knapp, and Father Bede Butler, and Father uh, Richard Weekman and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Saint Therese of the Child Jesus, patroness of our diocese, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The divine physician, the heavenly healer, who cured the woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years, who raised the 12 year old girl from death, is present on this sacred altar, this Eucharistic table. He offers us his body, his blood, his soul, his divinity, so that healed and restored by him, we may be instruments of his healing and restoration to others. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, Father. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. O oh, Father, I pray for them that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me, says the Lord. Body of Christ. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive honor and glory. Worthy are the ones who believe to receive the goodness of God. Worthy is the Lamb that was 
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. I want to thank you parents, grandparents, godparents, all of those who supported Tutus Tutus this week. It was an amazing week, a blessed week. Thank you. Also, uh, Catholic daughters, please join us in the hall for installation of our officers with our state regent here from St. Columba and Durango. Look forward to seeing you all soon. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let your song be sung from the mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Sing it Stands for joy, hope come before the Lord, and pray with God on glad tambourines, and let your trumpet sound. Sing a new song unto the Lord, let your song be sung from mountains.
Shall be raised. I know my sin. 